All right, guys, my name is Shervin. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to rank every single credit card in Canada. Now, when I say every single credit card, there's obviously hundreds of credit cards out there, but I'm going to try and go over at least all the major ones, all the big ones, all the ones that are notable. Now, just a couple of things before we start. This ranking is going to be based on my own opinion. So just keep that in mind when you're watching the ranking. Of course, all of these cards have specific numbers attached to them. They all charge a specific amount or they don't charge any fees at all. And of course, they all have their own features that they offer. They have different amount of points and cashbacks that they offer based on your purchases. But at the end of the day, of course, it comes down to the person, which feature is valued more and which one is less and which one is worth the higher fee and which one is not. So just keep that in mind while you're watching this. But I also I wanted to say that I haven't been paid by any credit card company or any of these cards to put them higher or anything like that. I do have referral links for each of these cards where if you apply through that link, it also helps the channel as well. But I do have those links for most of these cards that I'm going to go over. So that's not going to affect my decision making either. Also, as a gesture of good faith, I'm not going to put any of my referral links in the description of this video. Instead, I'll leave links to my full reviews for each of these cards that I've reviewed in the past. And if you're interested in learning more about any specific card, you can check out my full video on those cards as well. And of course, if you want to support the channel, which I always appreciate, you will be able to find my referral links in the description of those videos where I go over the card in full depth. But all right, with all that said, let's get right into it. First up, we have the Amazon credit card and the Amazon credit card. It used to rank a little bit higher, but given the recent changes that have been made to other credit cards, I'm going to put it a little bit lower. I'm going to put it at B. Now, what the Amazon card does is that it gives you 2.5% cash back for every single dollar that you spend on Amazon, which is a good feature. It's just that now there are other cards which also have no annual fees, similar to the Amazon card, which give you up to 3% cash back on everything that you buy. So for that reason, it's not as good as it used to be. Now, I do have this card myself. I used to use it more often because, you know, I use Amazon a lot, but I don't really use it as much anymore. So for that reason, it's just going to be in the B category. Next up, we have the CIBC Aventura Visa card, and this one is going straight down to D. Uh, as you notice, there is no F here because I want to be a little bit nice <laughs> to these cards. Uh, but yeah, I, I, this one could go to F too, honestly. It does work as a credit card, so I guess it doesn't quite go to F. But yeah, this is pretty, pretty much useless. You barely get any points. There are no other features. Uh, this is the first credit card I ever had. And the reason for that was because I was able to get the student version when I had no credit. And then it just rolled into like a normal version after I was done, uh, after I was done at college. And then it just stayed that way. Right. So I've, I've had this for God knows how many years, probably close to a decade at this point. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it works, but it's not a great card. Next up, we have the CIBC Aeroplan Visa card. Now, this one is slightly better than this one, so I'm going to put it at C. Not a great card. It gives you some Aeroplan points for purchases that you make, so it's at least got that going for it. Uh, when you sign up for it, you get 10,000 Aeroplan points, so that's not a bad sign-up bonus, especially given the fact that it's a free-to-own card. Uh, all these three cards that I've gone over so far are free-to-own, by the way. I should have mentioned that. And for that reason, it's not that bad, so it probably goes to C, but... Yeah, not a great card, not one I would recommend. Uh, the student version, however, is decent because as far as student credit cards go, most of them don't really do anything. So the fact that it still gives you some Aeroplan points, that's actually nice. So if you're looking for a student credit card, if you're a student, if you don't have any prior credit history, uh, this one actually would rank a little bit higher, probably go to A category for that reason. But uh, this is just a ranking for normal credit cards. It's not for student credit cards. So for that reason, it's going to go down to C. Uh, next up, we have the CIBC Dividend Visa card, and this one also goes to C. Uh, this one gives okay cash back, but it's not great. Again, definitely better than the Aventura Visa card. But again, nothing to write home about. There are definitely much better cards, which are also free to own, that give you a lot more cash back. Next up, we have the American Express Aeroplan card, and this one is the more premium version. Uh, this one costs a lot. It does give you a lot of Aeroplan points. It does give you access to the Maple Leaf lounges. So for that reason, it's not quite where these are. It is pretty expensive. It's like seven, eight hundred dollars to own, to own a year. So for that reason, it's going to be a little bit higher. Uh, I'm going to put it at B because it's it does have its merits. You have the Maple Leaf lounge access. You have all the Aeroplan points you get. The sign up bonus is very nice as well. 
but it's not great. And there are other cards which I'm going to go over, uh, which offer a lot more. It's kind of hard to talk about it when I haven't got to those other cards, but uh, I'll, I'll mention them when we get to them. Next up, we have the Scotiabank Passport Visa card. Now, this one is a very good card. This one's going to A. Uh, not quite S territory, but... It's very good for specific usage. Now, keep that in mind. For most people, this may not be as useful. But for very specific people, this is a very good card. This card has no foreign transaction fee. That means that if you go, let's say, to the US and you're using your credit card to pay for stuff, uh, this card will not charge you any foreign transaction fee. So you just pay the standard conversion rate. You don't pay anything else on top of that, uh, which is not the case with a lot of credit cards. Almost all credit cards charge three, four, five, six percent on top of that, right? So that could quickly add up if you're spending a lot of money or if you're staying there for a long time or whatever. So for that reason, it's a very good card to have. It does cost uh, somewhere in the mid hundreds, so 120, 150, something along those lines to, to own. And it really does mean that you need to be using it at least once in a while for it to be worthwhile. If you're barely ever using it for foreign transactions, then it may not be for you. Also, on top of that, you get some lounge access as well, which is nice. Uh, so again, it's a, it's a good card for, for traveling. Not amazing, but definitely very good for specific usage. So for that reason, it goes to A. Next up, we have the Simply Financial Visa card. Now, this is a free-to-own card. And this one, I'm thinking about whether it should go to S or A. I'm going to put it in S, and I'll explain why. Because this is... In the top two best no-fee credit cards in Canada. But keep in mind, just no-fee credit cards, right? I'm not talking about premium credit cards. When it comes to cards that have no fees, this card is easily in the top two, maybe top three, depending on whether uh, you count another card that I'm going to go over. Again, we'll get to those in a second. But this card is definitely in the top two or top three no-fee cards in Canada because this card is free to own, but it gives you 4% cash back at restaurants, bars, and coffee shops. And also it gives you some other cash back for other categories, not as much, but it, it still has those as well. But that's where the money's at, right? 4% back at restaurants, bars, and coffee shops. That's amazing. There are so many premium credit cards that don't even give you that amount of cash back for those kinds of categories. And really, when you think about it, most of us, where do we spend most of our money, right? When it comes to using our credit card. Obviously, there's rent and stuff like that. But as far as our day-to-day -day expenses, most of our spendings go either to groceries or go to restaurants, bars, coffee shops, or maybe electronics and stuff like that. So if you can put all your expenses at restaurants, bars, and coffee shops on this card, and again, it's a free-to-own card, you can keep this card forever and not pay any fees, annual fees for it, then that's 4% you're getting back on all of those categories. That's just amazing. And it's cash back. It's not even points. It's not even like you have to use it for a specific thing or whatever. No, it's literally you're getting cash back, right? So you're getting... The way I like to think about it is that whatever amount of tip I pay, I get a portion of that back, basically, right? So if I, if I go to a restaurant and I pay, let's say, I don't know, 15 18%, 20%, whatever you pay for your tip... Uh, you get 4% of that back, basically. Uh, so that's the way I think about it, and it's a it's an amazing card. Next up, we have the first S-level paid credit card, and that's the American Express Cobalt card. Now, this card is absolutely amazing. This card is my daily driver, is the one that I use most often. Uh, if you watched my What's in My Wallet video, I went over that extensively. I have a video where I go over how you can use this card and how beneficial it is. And I go into full depth. So if you want to learn more about the card, I highly recommend you check out that video. But basically, this card gives you five points for every dollar spent on groceries, restaurants, bars, coffee shops, and three points on every dollar you spend on streaming services, two points for every dollar you spend for travel, and then one point for everything else, right? And each American Express point, by the way, is worth at least one cent per point when you're redeeming it towards travel, but it could be worth up to two cents per point, 
depending on how you redeem it and stuff like that. Again, I go into full depth in that video. So if you want to learn more about how that works and how you can get the maximum out of those points, definitely check out that video. Uh, I don't really want to go over too much here because uh, there are so many more cards we got to get into. So uh, this, this video has got to be five hours long if I go into depth for every card. So uh, if you want to learn more, definitely check out that video. I go into full depth. Uh, but basically, if you can redeem those points for two cents per point, uh, that means that you're essentially getting 10% value back for every dollar you spent on groceries, restaurants, bars, coffee shops, and you get 6% value back on streaming services, 4% value back on travel, everything else. So it's just absolutely amazing, right? And it only costs $13 a month to own. So when you add it all up, that ends up being about $150 a year, something like that. So yeah, it's an amazing card. It's a card that I would tell everyone to use as a daily driver, unless you're someone who never travels, because you have to redeem those points towards travel for it to, you know, be very worthwhile. And if you never travel, then maybe in that case, I would say, okay, there are other cards that you can take a look at that give you straight cash back, right? But if you do, if you do travel at least once in a while, like maybe like once a year, once every other year, then in that case, you can just collect the points over and over again for like a year or two, and then just redeem them for a very nice travel, right? So as long as you do that, you're going to be fine. The one thing that a lot of people say is that, but American Express is not accepted everywhere, right? There are, there are some merchants that don't accept American Express. What about those? And that's absolutely true. There is about in my experience, about 5% of the places that you go to don't accept Amex. Some people say 10%, some people say 15%. Uh, you know what, let's just go with a nice metal ground, let's say 10%, right? 10% of the places you go to don't accept Amex. What do you do then? Well, just so happens there's another great card right here, which is free to own, uh, which is also a Visa card, which also gives you a lot of cash back for uh, restaurants, bars, coffee shops. Uh, so that's what I do, that's what I did myself for a long time. Uh, is that I paired these two cards up, right? I own both of them. And this, the Cobalt card is my daily driver. And anywhere that doesn't accept Amex, I usually use either this card or another card that we're going to go into. Uh, but even if you just have these two, you're good to go, honestly, because you're covered in all areas. And if you go somewhere where they don't accept Amex, you can just use your Simply card instead. And again, that other card is free to own. You don't have to like pay for two cards or anything. You just, you only have to pay the $13 a month for the Cobalt. For the Simply, you don't have to pay anything. It's free to own. And it's absolutely amazing. Also on top of that, the Cobalt card has a lot of other features, like all the travel coverages you're ever gonna need. Uh, it also covers your mobile device. If you buy a mobile device with this card, you also are insured. If you like break that phone or something, if you break the screen, if you lose the phone, uh, it's insured up to $1,000 per device for up to two years. Uh, so stuff like that is absolutely amazing. And overall, it's an amazing card. I highly recommend it to everyone and definitely check out my full video on it if you wanna learn more. Next up, we have the American Express green card, and this one is probably somewhere around B or C. It's slightly better than these ones, so I'm going to go with B, uh, but it could be in C as well. It's okay. It gives you one point per dollar spent on everything, and it also doesn't have any fees or anything, right? So it's it's not bad in that sense, but it's not that great. It doesn't have a lot of features, doesn't have a lot of coverages. It has like a couple here and there, but not too many. And overall, I would just never use it. There is also another American Express free to own card, which I'm gonna go over very soon, which is, I would say better than this card. So I would just go with that one, to be honest. If, if you wanted to go for a no fee credit card, that's an Amex card, that one is probably a better bet. Uh, next up, we have the Tangerine MasterCard, and this is the Tangerine Money Back MasterCard. Now, this one used to rank a lot higher for me for what it offers, but it, in the recent years, it has slightly gone down. It's probably somewhere on B or C. Again, it's slightly better than these two, so I'm going to go for a B. Uh, what the Tangerine card offers is you can choose two categories, any categories, and you get 2% cash back on those categories. And the good thing about that is that it's by far the most flexible card in Canada, right? There's no other card that lets you pick which categories you want to get a lot of cash back for. Uh, I believe this is the only one, as far as I'm aware. Uh, unless there's like some obscure card that I've never heard of. If you know any, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. But as far as I know, this is the only one. And what's great about that is that you can just pick what, what you need based on the other cards that you have. And let's say, you know, you purchase a lot from drugstores and you want to get a high cashback rate from drugstores. Uh, that's one of the things you can pick in the Tangerine card. And in that sense, it would be very useful. 
but that said, it's actually not as good anymore because there is a free to own credit card that offers 2% cash back on everything and even more on specific occasions, which we're going to go over very soon. Uh, that the Rogers MasterCard, which we're going to get into. And, you know, since that card has come out, it just doesn't really make sense to go with the Tangerine card anymore because why would you want to get 2% cash back on two categories when you can just get 2% cash back on everything on a free to own card, right? So, for that reason, it has come down. It probably would have ranked maybe an A beforehand, but it's slightly lower now. It's going to go to B. Uh, and honestly, I just, I don't know why anyone would use it. Unless you get, you apply for the other card and you get rejected. Maybe that's the only scenario where you can look at this one. Uh, but, you know, as long as that's not the case, I don't think you need this card, to be honest with you. Next up, we have the Amex Simply Cash card. And this one is a slightly better card than the American Express green card. It's also free to own. This is the card I was talking about, but it's still not amazing enough for us for it to go to like A or S. So I'm just going to leave it at B. Uh, and by the way, we should probably re rearrange this as well. Uh, we can rearrange based on which one is better in that category. Uh, so if we're going to do that, we're probably going to put the Amazon card at the, maybe like right here, the green card at the bottom. Yeah, that, that looks about right. Uh, and maybe... Actually, that one's good. All right. So, the American Express Simply Cash Card. This one is the free-to-own version of the Simply Cash Card. There's also a premium version, which we're going to get into. Uh, it's actually right here. Let's put that on the board as well. This one goes to A. So, what the free-to-own version does is that it gives you 1.25% cash back on everything. And then 2% cash back on gas and groceries. So, in that sense... It's not a bad card to have. You get 1.25% on everything, which is higher than what a lot of other cards offer. But like I mentioned, there is this new card that has come out, which gives you 2% cash back on everything. So there is just no reason to go with this one anymore. It could probably go even a little bit lower here since that other card has come out. Probably like somewhere around here. Uh, yeah, we'll just put the Amazon card here for now. And then this card, the Simply Cash Preferred card, it gives you 2% cash back on everything and then 4% cash back on gas and also on groceries, as well as a bunch of the coverages that a card like the Cobalt card offered, like the travel coverages, the mobile device coverages, all the stuff like that. So for that reason, this is a much better card than this one, but it does cost $10 a month. But really $10 a month is not that much, right? It's not that bad. It's $120 a year. Uh, again, I've had this card as well for a long time. But again, given the fact that there's this new card come out that is offering 2% on everything. This card is not that valuable to me anymore. Now, that said, if I was someone who, you know, uh, let's say I, I drive a lot more than I do right now, if I was driving to and back from the office every single day for like an hour or something like that, and as a result, I used a lot of gas, then this card may have actually been worth it to keep around because 4% back on gas is actually really good. And there are some other paid cards that offer that kind of a cashback rate on gas, but there is no free-to-own credit card that offers 4% back on gas. So in that sense, it could be useful for that. And also, if you don't have any of these other cards which offer those coverages, you could use this card for those coverages. So it's definitely good for some people. Also, if you don't ever travel, if you're one of those people who never travels, and for that reason, you don't want to go for a Cobalt card or something, then in that case, this card could be useful because what it does is that it just gives you straight cash back instead of giving you points or whatever. Uh, you just get straight cash back and use it for anything you want. So it's good for those people. It does still have an audience, but I don't think it's as amazing as it used to be. I would like Amex to maybe improve this card a little bit, maybe offer 3% cashback on everything. That would be amazing. If, if it offers 3% cashback on amazing, this would go back to S tier, I, I would say. But at 2% on everything and then 4% on gas and groceries, it's still good. You know, the more I, I speak, I'm convincing myself to maybe drop it down to maybe B, like at the very front of B. So it's better than all those other cards, but it's still in B. Uh, I'm going to leave it in A for now. Let's see what other cards get on the board, and then maybe I'll readjust it, okay? So, I'm going to put this in A for now, but it might end up going, like, to the top of B as I look at more cards that are coming in. So, we're just going to leave it there for now. Next up, we have the Amex Aeroplan credit card, and this one goes to C. 
Uh, this one, unlike the one that we put in B, doesn't offer the Maple Leaf Lounge access. It is a bit cheaper. It only costs $120 a year to own, but it gives you very little points per dollar spent. It only gives you 1.5 points per dollar spent on dining, and then one point for everything else. It also gives you two points for every dollar you spend with Air Canada, but I mean, how, how often do you do that? So it, in general, it's not that great. Uh, again, it's aeroplan points. So if you find the right flight, it could be worth as much as two cents per point. But even then, paying $10 a month to get 3% back on dining, I mean, you can get 4% back on dining with the Simply Visa card, and that doesn't cost you anything. So just overall, not a great card. I would just stay away from that one. Pretty useless. Next up, we have the American Express Platinum card and the Platinum Business card. And these cards, it really depends on whether you use them enough to be worth the fee. But just given how much they offer and how much value they provide, for me, they go to the S territory. But this is just for me. This is not for everyone. These cards are definitely not for everyone, right? So if it's for you, you would know. Let me put it that way. If, and if it's not for you, you would know as well. Uh, these cards, they both cost $800 a year to own. I have the business version myself. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about getting the personal version instead, maybe, perhaps. I, I got to think about that. Uh, but they both offer a lot of amazing features, which I'm going to go over in a second. Uh, but before that, I just want to mention that this is the only business card I have on this list. Uh, and that's because, you know, these two cards are very similar. And I have the business card myself, not the personal one. But I haven't included any other business cards on this list because I wanted to keep it more about just the personal cards that you can get. And if you're interested in seeing another list where I go over all the business credit cards, let me know in the comments down below if there's enough request for it. Then I'll definitely do that video as well. But these two cards, they both cost $800 a year to own, but they offer a lot of features like, for example... They both offer a $200 travel credit per year. So right there, you get $200 back, right? Because anytime you book a flight, a hotel or whatever, any kind of travel expense, right there, you get $200 of that covered by Amex, right? So just as long as you travel at least once a year, you you get $200 back right away, right? Like you're right down from 800 spent to only 600 spent really out of pocket. And then on top of that, the personal version gives you another $200 in dining credit. So if you, you know, if you go to a, to a number of specific restaurants that they offer this at and you spend at least $200 or more, the first $200 will be covered by your card every single year, one time a year. So that means that, you know, you can use that for an anniversary dinner, for, you know, maybe a Valentine's Day or whatever. Uh, maybe you can take your friends out and treat them one, one time a year or something like that. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone can find a way to use that credit. So again, if you use that, you're down to only $400 spent, right? Now, the business version doesn't have that specific thing, but it does have other ones. So, for example, they give you $200 in credit every year for you to use on Dell. So, if you buy any electronics from Dell, you can get up to $200 as a credit from this card. So, another $200 you can get back. On top of that, every month, they give you a $10 phone credit. So, if you have your cell phone bill on this card every month they will take at least ten dollars of that off so that's up to 120 dollars a year and then on top of that there's other credits like if you use indeed they give you up to 300 dollars off uh, if you enroll in the nexus program every four years or every five years something along those lines they give you 100 dollars off for that so you can get that program uh, and the nexus program helps you you know go from canada to us much easier you don't have to go through all the customs and everything they don't have to like uh, go super super draconian on you and just ask everything about everything all your intentions all your family history or whatever uh, it basically helps you be pre-approved for that kind of travel right so if you want to apply for that application which also costs like i believe it's 50 us dollars so in canadian that could be like i don't know 60 70 80 dollars something like that depending on what the <laughs> conversion rate is at the time uh, and again, up to $100, they will cover that for you. And then, uh, yeah, so that's why these two cards are amazing. And then that's just the, the credits that they offer, right? We haven't even got to the good stuff. They both give you unlimited access to all airport lounges, or almost all airport lounges, not every single one, obviously, but almost all airport lounges 
any airport you go to, there will be at least one lounge that they will offer with this card for you. And you can literally look at that on your Amex uh, app. If you have this card, you can go on the app and you can just search different airports and you can see which lounges they cover for that specific place. And of course, if you go to the US, almost all airports have at least one of these Amex specific lounges. So these are Amex Centurion lounges, which are only for the platinum members and the black card members. And the black card is a $10,000 card. You know, of course, we're not gonna cover that in this video because uh, that's an invite only card. So don't worry about that one. Uh, but other than that black card, that like, super exclusive card, uh, these two cards are the only cards that can get you into Amex Centurion lounges. Again, which are uh, some of the best ones out of all the all the airport lounges that you can go into in the US. So for that reason, these two cards are amazing. On top of all of that, they also have the mobile device insurance, but it's slightly higher than the Cobalt. The Cobalt covers you up to $1,000 per device. These two cover you up to $1,500 per device. They also give you a bunch of other features as well, like all the travel coverages, stuff like that. Also, you have this amazing service, which is known as the concierge service, which means that you basically have a personal assistant that can do anything for you, right? Anytime you want. You can just call up the, the number that you have for this card and then someone from Amex is going to pick up. And as long as you're asking for something that's legal, they will help you with pretty much anything, right? Whether you want to book, let's say, a restaurant that is already full, they will find a way to get you a table, even if it's already fully full. Or, or even if they don't, if they're not able to, they will find the next best option for you and they will take care of all of that, right? You don't have to worry about like, oh, I have to call this restaurant. I have to look at this. I have to look at that. They will just take care of all of that for you if you want to get tickets to a specific event, particularly if you know the tickets haven't dropped yet. You want someone to be there to get them for you as soon as they go live before they get sold out. You can just give them a call and let them know and they will take care of that for you. Basically, any requests in that sort of thing that you have, you can ask the Amex concierge and they're absolutely amazing. They will cover anything you want. On top of that, both of these cards don't have any preset limit, which means that, and the reason for that is because they're not technically credit cards, they're both charge cards. Uh, they're, just, they're still credit cards, really. But they're, they're called charge cards because they don't have a specific limit. Uh, instead, what you need to do is that if you want to spend a big amount, you just go on the app and you say, hey, I want to spend this much. Is that okay? And then most of the time they just say, okay, as long as you're not putting in a crazy high number, uh, they just say, yeah, sure, go ahead. And then that way they just pre-approve you for that kind of a transaction, right? So, and of course, if, if it's a small amount that you're buying, you just buy. It's it's no, no big deal. They're not going to be like, you don't have to do that for every single purchase is what I mean. If you want to spend a lot more than you normally would, uh, you can go and check on the app and usually it's fine. Usually they allow you within reason. So they both don't have any limit. You can spend spend as much as you want, as long as you keep your account in good standing, of course, and you're uh, always paying off your balance. Uh, then you can just use them in an unlimited sort of way. Of course, there's asterisks, but you, you get what I mean. Uh, so yeah, both are amazing cards. Highly recommend them for people who can afford them, obviously, uh, and people who travel a lot, right? So if you don't, if you don't travel a lot or if you're if you're not making too much as of now, uh, then perhaps this card, these cards are not for you. You would be better off with a Cobalt or something like that. But if you are someone who either travels a lot, like three, four times a year uh, or at least twice a year at the very minimum, I would say. If, if you just do once a year, it's probably not worth it. But at least twice a year if you travel and on top of that, you you know, you want to get those benefits, like you want to get that, the dining credit or the cell phone bill credit and stuff like that, uh, because you, you're already using those anyways. And then on top of that, you're fine paying a little bit more to get all those amazing services. Uh, then these two cards are absolutely amazing. Uh, again, I've made full in-depth videos on both of these. Uh, I will leave links to all of these videos in the description down below if you want to check out more and learn more about every single detail with all of those specific offers. But uh, yeah, definitely check those out if you're interested, but definitely it's not for everyone, right? These cards are not for everyone. You know, for, for most people, this could be all the way down to like B or C because either they just can't afford paying that much, even if it is amazing, or they just don't travel enough to take advantage of it. Maybe like they travel maybe once every year or once, once every other year. In that case, it obviously wouldn't be worth it to get this card and pay $800 every year. But as long as you're traveling 
I would say at least twice a year, th these cards are absolutely amazing. And if you can afford it, I would say, you know, at least at least consider it. Next up, we have the Scotiabank Momentum Visa card, and this one goes to A, again, for a very specific reason, right? So I made this video, <laughs> I believe it's the last video I made, about how you can use this card to basically get a ton of money back on your rent every single year. Uh, in fact, the first year you can get close to $700 back on your rent, up to that amount at least, it uh, depends on how much you pay for your rent. And then every subsequent year you can get up to $500 back on your rent every single year. So for that reason, it's just that reason alone, it's absolutely amazing. Now, of course, you can't use this card to pay rent directly. Uh, you would have to use an intermediary service because you can't use credit cards for paying rent. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, my, my landlord doesn't accept credit cards for rent. And to that say, yeah, almost none of them do. Uh, but the way this card works with that service is that the landlord just receives cash, right? So from their perspective, they're just getting cash. It's just that you're using this card with an intermediary and they will pay them cash and they will only charge you on the credit card. And because this card has a high cashback rate for recurring purchases, and this kind of a payment is considered recurring purchases, for that reason, you get a ton of cashback, right? Which helps you pay the fees for that service, helps you pay the $120 annual fee for this card as well. And then after all of that, you can still have up to $700 left in pure profit, right? So if you use it that way, it's an amazing card. Again, I will leave my uh, link to that video as well. Uh, if you want to learn more about how that works, I highly recommend you check out that video. I go in full depth into how you can use this card to get hundreds of dollars back every year on your rent. If you're someone who rents, obviously, if you own your house or if you're paying mortgage, then this wouldn't apply. Uh, but for anyone who's renting, I would highly recommend you at least check out that video to see how this works and see if this, some, this is something you want to do. Uh, so yeah, for that reason, it's going to the A category, but other than that, it's not really useful for anything else. So keep that in mind. If you don't want to use it for this specific scenario that I just mentioned, uh, it's not really that good. It probably goes down to C for any other, uh, any other uses you want to do with it. Next up, we have the CIBC Costco MasterCard. And this one, this one's a tough one because this one gives you very little cashback, gives you 1% cashback at Costco. It does give you 2% cashback on gas and up to 3% cashback on Costco gas stations, I should say. So you know what? I'm going to put it a B because I'm sure for some people it's going to be useful, particularly if you have a Costco gas station near you. Uh, for that reason, it could be useful. But, you know, most of the time, now it is true that Costco only accepts MasterCard, so you can use any of, the, any of these other cards. But... You could just use another MasterCard that gives you 1% cashback on everything. And then that would still be the same, right? So it's not great. It is at least free to own. So there's that. You could just get it. And if you know if you go to Costco a lot and if you if there's a Costco gas station near you, you could just get it and just use it for those specific things. And since it's free to own, it doesn't really matter. It's fine, right? But I, I would definitely not go with this card for my either my primary or even my secondary card, right? Like I would definitely suggest you have another primary card, whether it's the Cobalt or the Simply or the uh, or any of these other cards, honestly, I would go with any of those as my primary. And for the secondary, I would just pick another one of these, to be honest. If you want a third or fourth card after that, and you know you use Costco a lot, then you know what, you could just get this. Why not? It's free to own. There's no problem with that. But is it a great card? Not particularly. So I'm just going to put it in the high Bs. So it's a little bit closer to the top but not quite. Should I actually put it over here? Maybe. No, we'll just put it here. It's fine. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit closer to the top for B, but it's definitely not good enough to go to A. Now, next up, we have the Scotiabank Platinum American Express card. And this one, this one's a kind of a tough one because it does cost a lot. It costs $400 a year to own. It gives you 10 complimentary lounge accesses with the Priority Pass program. I'm going to put it in A, but the lower A's, right? So I do think if you don't want to spend the 800 on the on the platinum cards, but you still, you know, you travel a lot and you want to have airport lounge access, you could get this one. It is cheaper, but keep in mind, these two cards offer a lot of credits that could bring down the amount that you're paying for the card, really. So Dan says it's actually not that cheaper when you really think about it, because, for example, the personal platinum card, right? You spent $800 on it, 
But if you get $200 back for the travel booking and then another $200 back for the dining credit when you, when you go to, to a restaurant, whether it's an anniversary dinner or whatever else you want to do with it, you know, if you get those two $200 credits, you're back down to only $400 spent, really. So in that sense, they would be worth the same, right? So I think the Platinum cards are much better, in my opinion. But that said, this one is not without merit. And another good thing that this card has that the Platinum card doesn't have is that it has no foreign transaction fees. So if you spend a lot of money in, abroad and you don't want to go and get this passport card for whatever reason... Uh, then you could use this one instead. Uh, of course, it does cost a lot more than the passport card because it has the the lounge access and everything. But keep in mind, this card doesn't give you access to the Centurion lounges. So the lounges that are specific to Amex, you don't get with this card. Also, a lot of other lounges, like uh, the Delta Lounge is an amazing lounge that I've been to uh, with uh, the American Express Platinum card. And that lounge you want to be able to enter with the priority pass membership that you get from this card so there are a number of lounges you can't go to but there there is still enough lounges where you should be covered pretty much almost airport you go to there's at least something there but is it the best lounges probably not so yeah honestly it might even be b because the more i think about it is that if you get the personal platinum card and then you get $200 back on your travel, which we were going to go on anyways, and you get another $200 back on, let's say, an anniversary dinner or a Valentine's Day dinner or whatever, which, again, you were going to spend anyways, then at that point, they're the, they're, they're the same price, really. Because, you know, you got those back. You're not going to get those back with this card. So, really, you're down to $400 spent. And at $400 spent... Platinum card is obviously so much better than this one, uh, with the only exception being the foreign transaction fee, uh, if that's important for you. But if, if that's important for you, you could just get the, the passport card, right? You could pair these two up, right? So you could get the, the Platinum card as your, let's say, as your main card, as your daily driver, and get the passport card as your secondary, right? It does cost another $120, that's true. But I just think this card is so much better that it might be worth it. But again, that's just my opinion, right? So for some people, this might be a better option. And if that's the case, uh, I understand that. No problem. But in my opinion, this is where it gets to opinions because it's kind of a subjective decision. In my opinion, I would rather have, let's say, these two if I wanted to get everything this card is offering than to just get this card. So, But that's the way I would look at it. Uh, of course... If you feel that this is a better option, uh, I can understand that. But for the for that reason, because this is a list based on my own opinions, I'm gonna bring this down to a high B instead of a low A, if if that makes sense. Now next up we have the Rogers World Elite, uh, and of of course let's actually do the Rogers Mastercard first before we do the World Elite. Uh, this one is also an S tier. And the reason for that is, and I'm going to put it above the Platinum cards, uh, the reason for that is because the Rogers MasterCard is completely free to own. doesn't cost you anything to own. If you have this card, and as long as you have at least one service with either Rogers, Shaw, Fido, that could mean either your cell phone is with one of them, or if you have, let's say, Wi-Fi from Shaw or something, or if you have cable from one of them, as long as you have that, which I think most people have anyways, this card gives you 2% cash back on everything, everything. And then on top of that, if you use that cash back to pay off one of those services that I just mentioned, whether it's a cell phone plan from Rogers, Shaw, Fido, uh, well, not Shaw, but Rogers or Fido, really. Uh, if there is a Wi-Fi from Shaw, if there is a, you know, if you have a, a cable from Shaw or something like that. If you use the cashback to pay off those things, you also get another additional 50% on top of what you've earned. So really, it's like you're getting 3% cashback on everything you spend. And that's absolutely amazing for a no-fee credit card. Even if you don't get the bonus, that's still 2% cashback on everything, which is awesome, right? Another way you can use it is if you want to buy a new phone, right? Because if you, let's say, accumulate all the cashback, and then you go out to buy a new phone from either Rogers or Fido, then you can 
spend the cash back to buy the new phone, like the new iPhone or the new Galaxy, whatever you're into. You could just use that cash back and it will be worth basically as if you were getting 3% cash back the whole time. So for that reason, this card is absolutely amazing. It's free to own, which is another amazing thing about it. So again, this is another great card that you could pair up with either your Cobalt card, uh, this being your the card that you use for everything else. And again, it's free to own, so it's not something you have to worry about. Now, of course, if you only want to use this card, your secondary card for like restaurants, that's your main main spend basically is you go to restaurants a lot then the simply card obviously gives you four percent cash back on, on those categories so it might be better for that specific reason but for everything else other than restaurants bars and coffee shops obviously the rogers card is absolutely amazing it is the best and no fee credit card in canada 100 so i'm actually going to put it above simply as well overall i would still say cobalt is the better card overall because of just the amazing numbers that you get temp up to 10% back on groceries and dining and all of that. Like, that's just crazy, right? But it does have an annual fee. It's a really close call between the two of them. I'm just going to put Cobalt up ahead slightly. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe it's because I've had the Cobalt for such a long time and I just loved using it. Uh, but I'm going to put that slightly above Rogers, but Rogers is right up there. Now, the World Elite gets a little complicated. Now, this one... It could be right here, but depending on your situation, it could be like a little bit further down. I'm just going to put it right here, but I'm going to put it below Rogers. And I'm going to explain why. So this card basically offers everything that this card offers with the cashbacks, but it offers even more. It offers some airport lounge access. It offers some coverages as well. The issue is this card has some specific requirements. Right? You need to be making a specific amount every single year in order to qualify for it. If I remember correctly, it was something along like $80,000, $90,000 a year you need to be making or more uh, personally or at least $150,000 household that you ha need to be earning every single year in order to be able to be eligible for this card. And on top of that, you need to spend a specific amount every single year to keep it open. Uh, if I remember correctly, again, it was $15,000 every single year that you have to spend on the card in order to keep the card, basically. So for that reason, it's maybe it's perhaps not for everyone, right? So I was thinking about putting, putting it a little bit lower, but you know, since we put the platinum cards up here and that's not for everyone, uh, I'll just put it where it, it would be for people who it is meant for, right? If that makes sense. So for a lot of people, I would say this card is the one to go for because you can actually qualify for it. You don't have to spend 15,000 every year or whatever. And it offers you most of the features that this card offers too. This card, you would have to be spending a specific amount. You would have to be earning a specific amount. So it's definitely not for everyone. But if you do qualify for it, if you do spend that much on your credit card anyways, every single year, then in that sense, it's a very good card, obviously. And it's slightly better than the, than the other one. So the World Elite, kind of complicated. Not for everyone. Absolutely not. But it, it could be very good. Next up, we have the Amex Gold card. This one... It's an oldie but a goldie, if, if you will. <laughs> Apologies for the pun. But the gold card probably goes to B, I'm guessing. I'm trying to think. So, yeah, it's not good enough to go to A. I'll just put it at the front of B. Perhaps after this one. Yeah, that looks about right. So, the gold card gives you some airport lounge access, I believe four times a year, to Plaza Premium lounges. Which is not... A great lounge by the way but yeah, it's something at least uh, and it does offer you some points but the points that it gives you are just nowhere near as good as the cobalt card so for that reason it just you know don't even bother with the points and it costs more than the cobalt card to own as well this card costs 250 dollars a year to own so for that reason it's just a weird in-between card like it's it's not quite a platinum card which offers all these amazing features all these amazing travel features and it's not it's not as cheap as the Cobalt card, and it doesn't offer any of the amazing points that the Cobalt card offers, right? The po Cobalt card offers five points for groceries, restaurants, coffee shops, whatever, three points on streaming services, all that. Gold card doesn't offer anywhere near for all those things. So for that reason, it's not really that good. It does cost more than the Cobalt card as well. So 
really, in my opinion, everyone should either go for the Platinum card or the Cobalt card instead of the Gold card, right? So if you, if you care about getting a lot of points, but you don't travel that often, the Cobalt card is the one for you. If you travel a lot, then the Platinum card is the one for you, right? So I just don't really see who would go for the Gold card. It just It's kind of an in-between, which doesn't really do much better than either of them. So I would say either go for the Cobalt card or the Platinum card instead of the Gold card, if the Gold card was the one you're looking at. It just, it doesn't really make sense for anyone to go for this one over those two. Now, the next one is one that has a special place in my heart in all the worst ways, and that is the Scotiabank Scene Plus Visa card. That one goes right to the bottom. This card, what do I even say about this card? So this card used to be a lot better. It used to offer five scene points for every dollar spent on movie theaters, uh, Cineplex movie theaters, of course, but this is Canada. Let's be honest. Every movie theater you go to is a Cineplex movie theater. This card used to give you five points, but now it only gives you one point per dollar spent at movie theaters. So (laughs) nowhere near as good as it used to be. Each point is worth one cent when redeeming towards, you know, getting a new movie or whatever. The other issue with this card is that I remember when I got this card first, this was a video I made uh, and it got a lot of views as well. Uh, I will leave that video in the description as well if you want to check it out. This card, it all had a sign-up bonus where if you spent, I believe, $750 in the first three months, you would get a specific amount of points, right? I think it was 5,000 points, something like that. So I got the card. This was years ago. This was back when it was still a good card, relatively. I got the card and I spent more than 750 in the first month, right? I spent, I put all my expenses on this card and I went way over what the requirement was for the sign-up bonus, right? And I did it in the first month, not even the first three months. So I did that and I was like, okay, perfect. I'm going to get the points. A couple of weeks go by, one month goes by, two months go by. The points don't come, right? So... I had more than qualified for the sign-up bonus, but the sign-up bonus points just don't come, right? So I emailed the customer service, and then they say, oh, you got you got to phone the customer service or whatever. I'm like, okay, fine. I call up customer service. They don't answer for over an hour. After an hour, I just give up. I'm like, I'll call them another day. I call another day. After like 45 minutes, they finally answer. I tell them about the situation, and they're like, oh, okay, please send this information to this specific email. I'm like, fine, I'll do it. I do that as well. Nothing happens for over a month. I call them again. I email them again. They say they will take care of it. Again, another couple weeks go by and nothing happens. And I finally make that video. I'm like, their customer service is horrible. They're not giving me my bonus, whatever. And then funny enough, a couple days after I make that video, I don't know if they saw that video or not, but for whatever reason, they email me and they say, okay, we're going to send you the sign-up bonus and we'll send it double what we promised, right? Because of all the inconvenience you've gone through. So that was kind of funny. I, something tells me they saw my video and they were like, oh, whoops. Uh, but I don't know, maybe I'm just being paranoid. I don't know. But yeah, not a great card. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, definitely since it's been nerfed either. So yeah, just at the very bottom. Don't even look at it, honestly. Next up, we have uh, the Scotiabank Amex card. Uh, so these are the other Amex cards that Scotiabank has. Uh, these are much cheaper. They don't offer all the benefits. Uh, they offer some points, but they're not that great. I'm going to put them in C, uh, both this one and the gold card. They're they're fine. Uh, maybe I can put this one a little bit higher, like down here. They're fine. They're not great. They're whatever. I would just stay away from them, honestly. This one is the best one, and if you want something that replaces a Platinum card, you, maybe you can look at it, but the other ones, they just don't offer enough to be worth it. Uh, and they uh, this one at least costs uh, $120, $150 a year to own as well, so definitely not worth it. The BMO cashback card is an oldie but goldie for sure. I will put it in B, in high B, probably around here. It gives you 3% cashback on groceries, which is pretty nice, but again, if you can get the Rogers card, then you can get 3% back on everything, right? If you use it correctly. So when you have that, you don't really need this one. So I'm just going to leave it be here. But it was a nice card. I do have this one as well. And for for a long time, it was a good card to use for groceries alone. Next up, we have the Neo Credit Card. And this one is, I would say, a C. 
it could be a B as well, depending. But mo let's let for most people it's C. I would say it does have specific merchants where you can get good cash back on, but there are very few and far in between. They have to be the exact merchants that you use. So I would just I would just stay away from this one as, as well. Most of the time, it only gives you like one percent cash back, which is not that great. So I, I would just put it in a C. Even though Neo is a is a very good company and they have very good other products, like their savings accounts are amazing. Their credit cards, however, honestly, they could be better. I, I really hope they make it better because I like the company. I like what they're doing. But their credit cards, they, they can be a lot better, man. Like, you, you guys got to step up your credit card game. I'm telling you. Next up, we get to RBC. Now, RBC, of course, I have a very famous video on this channel in my shorts where I talk about how overrated RBC and their credit cards are. I'm just going to put them all in C, honestly. <laughs> I'm just going to, yeah, this is going to be a meme. I'm telling you right now. Um, oh, well, ac except for one. There is one that's pretty good. I'm going to go over that one. So all of these RBC cards, they're not the worst, but they offer you like maybe like 1% cash back, 2% cash back. If you want to get a 2% cash back, you have to pay fees. There are just so many better cards up here that, Honestly, you just don't have to ever look at any of these. Uh, even the points they offer, any RBC point is worth 0.66 cents. So they're not even worth one cent. So if they offer three points on, let's say, dining, that's worth 2% value back, which is pretty bad. I mean, there is a card that gives you 4% cash back on dining and it's free to own, right? So it's like, yeah, all of these cards, none of them are all that great. I wouldn't go for any of those. The only RBC card, which is actually pretty decent and it's going to go to a is the westjet rbc card and this one the westjet mastercard is actually really good it does cost 120 150 dollars something like that to own every single year but it's actually quite worth it if you use it properly if you're someone who flies with the westjet particularly every year you can get one voucher for a companion with you so for example if you buy let's say a ticket from let's say vancouver to toronto from westjet and there's two of you like you're going with your your brother your sister your girlfriend boyfriend whatever uh wife whoever if you're going with a companion one of you can get your ticket for free if you use this card to buy it and you use it on westjet.com right so instead of just buying from expedia or something you go on westjet.com you buy the ticket from let's say Vancouver to Toronto or wherever else. What you can do is you can use this card to pay for it. And that would mean that one of the tickets, the second ticket basically would be free up to a certain amount, of course. And in that scenario, it's actually very, very worth it, right? Very much so worth it. And on top of that, it gives you other privileges for WestJet specifically. For example, your first checked bag will be also free. Uh, if you use this card to purchase the ticket. So those are pretty nice advantages. Each of those are going to cost you a little bit if you are just using a normal credit card. So if you can get them for free, then that should be well worth the fee that you're paying for the card. But of course, it's not for everyone, right? If you know that every single year you're flying at least once with WestJet, then this is a great card to have. If you don't know that for a fact, then it's probably not for you. And... Well, I definitely don't know for a fact that I'm going to be using WestJet every year, so that's why I don't have it. But if I was flying with WestJet, this is a very good card to have, for sure. And last but not least, we have the TD cards over here. Now, some of these, these two particularly go to D, of course, because they, the cashback offers very little cashback, like 1%, 0.5% cashback, absolutely ridiculous amounts. The rewards are also very, very, very bad. Uh, very low points per dollar spent. None of them are useful. The Aeroplan ones, however, are a little bit of a different story. So the, the premium one, the most expensive one, goes to B, particularly because the sign-up bonus is really good. Uh, I, made a, I made a video about this card and specifically about their sign-up bonus. Uh, it's not a great card for a long-term usage, but if you just get it for one year and you use that sign-up bonus particularly, it gives amazing sign-up bonuses. And of course, it gives you airport lounge access to Maple Leaf lounges, a bunch of other stuff. It's a good card to have for like a one year and get the sign up bonus. The other two are not that good. They're cheaper to own, but they're they're pretty average. They're not that great. I would probably put them like below the 
free to own aeroplan card from CIBC. Actually, I would probably put this one above this one too. These two, they're not that great. They don't offer all the same advantages as the most premium version. They don't even give you that much in points. Even that, this one doesn't give you great points. So I wouldn't be using these to, you know, redeem a lot of free travel or anything like that. You're much better off just going with, uh, if you're trying to accumulate a lot of points for travel, you're much better off going with something like a Cobalt card. Uh, and if you if you want other features, like you want a lot of airport lounge access, there's obviously a lot of other cards. There's a Platinum cards. Uh, the Scotiabank card gives you some airport lounge access. Uh, there, even the the premium Scotiabank card also gives you some airport lounge access, so those ones are better. Overall, I would just not go after these cards. They're not that great. But yeah, that basically brings it to an end. Let me know what you guys thought of this. Uh, do you want me to do more videos like this where I go over tier lists? Is this something you would be interested in seeing more? Let me know. Do you want me to make that additional video about the business credit cards? Uh, this was my first time doing a tier list kind of video. Hopefully it went smoothly. Let me guys know if there's something I could have done better, uh, if there's something I can improve. And as always, if you haven't done so already, make sure to smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. It helps me out a lot. And also, if you haven't done so already, make sure to smash the subscribe button so you're subscribed so you see every new video that comes out. With that said, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.